Hello, it's me, your favourite automotive-themed fashion guru here once again with another video on my top style tips. Now, in today's video, we're going to be talking about something that I think is very important, but all too often completely forgotten. We are very keen to talk about tyres as being one of the most important things on a car because it's the way that the car touches the road. Equally, I think steering wheels are very important because they are one of your major contact points with the car, and as much as that, so are shoes. Yet, so few people ever seem to talk about the shoes they wear outside of trying to impress people on a track day. But if you drive the sort of cars that I am lucky enough to drive on a frequent basis, you'll realise that you cannot really do it in just any old pair of flip-flops. The choice of footwear is very important, and I think it's actually pretty much a safety topic as much as a driving enjoyment one. Now, I've watched a lot of videos of late, because I've actually had a little bit of free time, very unusual for me, and I keep seeing one brand mentioned, Pilotti. So, I thought, you know what, it's been quite a good year, and I fancy treating myself. So I bought myself a new shirt from Claudio Lugli, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to buy some of these Pilotti shoes, see what the fuss is all about. Because in all the videos they seem to sponsor, people tend to talk about anything except what makes driving shoes so very important and so different. So in today's video, I'm going to talk you through a couple of the shoes I've been wearing recently and these lovely Pilates that I have bought with my own actual money. I didn't get any special discount, nothing like that on them. I just went on their website and purchased them. Now, this is a pair of what I think they call the uh, Avenue or the Legacy, or something like that. Doesn't really matter, they're, they're these. And it's lovely green, and they do look pretty awesome. Um, I've only worn them for a couple of days. Uh, I've been testing them out with a few different cars, including the Ferrari, which is, at the moment, the thing with the narrowest and tightest pedal box on the driveway. I'm testing these against a couple of other shoes. I have these, my Lonsdales. These cost about £25, and I get them from Amazon, or you can get them from Sports Direct, and you know what, these are some of the best driving shoes that I own. I'll get onto why in just a minute. Alongside those, I've also been wearing these. These are some Pumas, I think they're called a, a Storm or, or something like that. Uh, I was given these by my buddy Scott from Ratarossa, who got given them from Puma. So full disclosure, these were, I guess, a freebie of sorts. Unfortunately, the worst thing about these is that they, they, they do actually have a Ferrari logo on the back. And um, using my own logic, I shouldn't really be wearing these because I own a Ferrari and therefore I don't think I should be allowed to wear any Ferrari branded stuff because I have the real thing. Um, however, these are really, really comfortable. And in, the, you know, in this video, they are going to take the place of the, the average trainer. You know, your bog standard, normal, off the shelf, you're going to be able to pick up a pair of these pretty much anywhere that you go or something very similar to it. Now, I appreciate there are many different types of footwear available, and it's also something that is very personal. Uh, like seats and like many other things, something that works for somebody, like for me, may not work for you. But this is how I feel about these products, and I should also tell you a little bit about my specific requirements. Now, my feet are quite wide. Uh, I wear a size 10.5 UK, which is a size 11 USA. Uh, I think they're about a G width, my feet. They're not quite the same size, which is quite a normal thing, apparently. Um, and I also walk kind of funny. Uh, my right leg and foot are kind of a bit bent up from when I was born, which is something that just never really got fixed. It's not really a disability of any note. It's just an annoyance. Um, and it's one of the reasons I don't go running. That and... I hate running because I look stupid. Um, but what that means is I, I wear through shoes pretty quickly. So these are only probably a month old or so. And you can see that kind of I basically wear through the outer edge of footwear pretty fast, um, which means that I have to buy shoes on a more regular basis than I would like. These Lonsdales I started buying about two or three years ago. And just for a few reasons, really. Uh, I started driving a few cars which had really narrow pedal boxes. So uh, you're talking uh, narrow caterums, air-cooled 911s, a few old Lotus, stuff like that. Some cars were surprised with the pedal box, and some cars um, will not. But um, these were essentially the narrowest thing that I could get on my feet. That's it. I wanted something that was as close to a sock as I could possibly get. 
And there's a couple of different elements about this shoe that make them, I think, really good for driving. Uh, first off, that fact that they're pretty narrow, but I can still fit in them. Because I have wide feet, I have to buy something that's probably a little bit longer than I technically need so that I can get my big old feet in there. Um, and, and that's tricky. It also means that over time, the shoes will deform and eventually not support me uh, too well. And that's why I have to keep buying new ones. But these are pretty thin. They have a reasonably narrow sole here, which is pretty handy. But the most important bit to me is here. Because this really, this is this section here, which is where I do sort of most of my footwork. So when you're going to kind of um, heel and toe and all that sort of stuff. So you need lots of control. And one of the things that a lot of trainers totally miss out on, including the Pumas down here, is the sole. They're just way too thick. So look at this. This is this is actually pretty thin. So this is only probably, I mean, it's the thickest at, at the back, but that's fine. Because you don't really use this bit for the pedals. You use this bit. And so that's only, I don't know, five, six mil thick, uh, maybe up to... 10 mil at its absolute thickest, but that's by the time you're back here. And it's, it's pretty flexible, you can move it about, and you've got plenty of feel through it. So I can sort of feel my fingers kind of moving through, you can feel each individual finger, I'm sort of pressing them up against each other there. And that's pretty nice. Whereas, in these lovely Pumas, you have a much, much thicker sole. It's less flexible, and you're pretty much I'm kind of pushing down here. I, all, I can feel something coming through, but not a lot. These are extremely comfy, and I've done a lot of walking and stuff like that in them. Uh, for cars where I'm not really worried about ultimate feel through the pedals, you know, big 4x4s, you know, Range Rovers, big Audis, that kind of stuff, I've been wearing these. Especially when I do my drive-by shots and stuff on the side of the road, I'm kind of jumping up into hedges and, and stuff like that, and these are really good to wear, uh, really nice, really comfortable. These, I think, run about £60 a set or so. These, I pay about £25 a set. The Pilotis, these list at about 160 quid. Now, I paid, I think, £120 for these. Um, that was a combination of the Black Friday deal that they were doing, and I also found a little voucher code. I've been using the, the Honey app, which gets you a little discount code. So I got about 40 quid off. Um, what do I think of the shoes? Well, the design, I love. I, th I think they look awesome. Uh, so these are the, the racing ones. So you've got the little, little sort of, you know, number spot on the side, I guess it's supposed to imitate. Uh, the leather is kind of nice and soft. Uh, stitching isn't the best quality. There's a couple of uh, bits of loose stitching here and there, which doesn't bug me too much, but it's just little, little just tags kind of uh, hiding here and there. I've only worn them a few days. I'm slightly concerned as to how long this tread is going to last. Uh, the other thing is, for me, when I'm out and about jumping around in fields and so on and so forth, uh, this tread pattern here is not the best. With it being winter too, I do have some concerns as to how grippy these are actually gonna be uh, just out and about when I'm doing stuff. Because if I am doing reviews on a car, I'll have half of it actually me driving in the car, and then the other half will me be you know, jumping into fields and doing all sorts of stuff to get the drive-by shots uh, that you all know and love. So something like this is just a, it's a little bit better. It's not vastly better. We've got little bits here. And then, of course, the, the Lonsdale actually is probably the best of all of them. It's actually got more tread in it, so much like a tyre, I can actually grip fairly well in this. So it's, it's a pretty sturdy thing. And I'm not the most stable person on my feet, so I do appreciate having a trainer, which gives me a little bit of grip. And as we've got the two up here, let's compare the bases of them. So you can see fairly easily that there is a much, much wider sole to this through the whole shoe rather than in the Lonsdale. Now, the Pilotti actually does a fairly good job of sort of being a bit of a halfway house between these chappies and the Pumas. You've actually got a really nice feel. I'd say perhaps the best feel out of the three through the sole. It's really nice and thin where it wants to be feels like it's a reasonable quality and you know I generally love the whole shoe. The laces I find to be a little bit on the short side. I ordered these in the same size as I'd order anything else, 10 and a half, and the fit was really really good. So when I order some stuff, especially anything that's sort of European, um, these are made in Portugal and sometimes you order stuff and it's um, sized a little bit differently. So these are Italian design shirts and I have to order these in like two or three sizes larger than if I'm buying something in Marks and Sparks for example. So yeah, lace is a bit short, the colour's quite nice, slightly concerned that they seem to be wearing a little bit after a couple of days, but maybe they're just bedding in. However, there is, as far as I'm concerned, from the perspective of a driving shoe, a fatal flaw in the Pilotti. 
and it's it's this bit here. So when you've got a car, say like a Ferrari, old air called 911, something like that with a very narrow pedal box, there is one absolute nightmare scenario that you want to try and avoid if you possibly can. And that is getting your feet hooked up under a pedal. So when you've got pedals so close together, you don't want to push the pedal down, lift up, and then be trapped, either on the brake or on the accelerator. Neither is desirable. Your left foot generally tends not to be so much of a concern. The right foot is the more important one, because your clutch is not such a biggie. Some cars are a little bit annoying. Some have a, a pedal rest, which is perhaps a, a little bit invasive if you've got larger feet like me. Uh, others are fine. But generally, it's the right foot that is the point of concern. And these have this pretty pronounced lip protruding around the edge of the shoe here. Now, I have seen that they do a slightly more aggressive, clearly more sort of track oriented shoe, I guess you could call it, which looks overall a bit narrower and doesn't seem to have this. However, about four out of the five of the models that they, they do of shoe have this edge right here. And... Um, it's it's not good enough. Uh, simply put, as a driving shoe, that's lethal. Um, I was out in the Ferrari the other day, and I got hooked up under the pedals. You just get caught here, and it's sorted easy enough, but it's just, for me, a real oversight in a driving shoe. These should be tucked right under. This should be a little bit narrower. This down here should be narrower too. They're really comfy. They're really nice. I really like the shoes, but... If you're looking for something that you can enjoy in a car like an old Lotus, 911, Ferrari, so on and so forth, unfortunately, I just cannot rate the Pilotti. I've also started to discolour a little bit on the leather and so on and so forth, and they, they haven't had, you know, that hard life. This is not like these are months and months old. I've worn these for two days, and they've already started to sort of weather and bed in. I mean, maybe that's intentional. Is that what they're supposed to do? I, I, I don't really know, but... You know, I've had lots of other sort of leather products and they don't really do this. But they, they feel nice. I do like them. I am going to keep wearing them and using them. I would love to chat to Pilotti and help them design a, a proper usable driving shoe because I'm not convinced that such a thing is actually on the market. You know, I, I do like my Lonsdales. They are decent. £25. They're an absolute bargain. And I will, I will happily suffer people mocking me for wearing them. But the fact is, they do a job and they do a job really, really well. But the Pilotis, if you're thinking of buying some for someone, um, get a bit of a discount, 100 odd quid for these. They're not too bad. Their prices go up to about £200, it seems, depending on the design and style of shoe that you want. And, and they feel like a nice product. I like the way that the company sort of conduct themselves, and they seem to be very interested in, you know, car brands, car people, stuff like that. And that's nice to see, and it's nice to have products that are supposedly designed for people like us. But I do feel like some room for improvement does exist within these shoes. So... There you go. That's a short little video from me on footwear, an unusual but very important topic. So, thank you for watching. Please like, comment below, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you for the next one. Bye-bye.